Hello chess lovers, I have a brilliant and a very complex endgame study for you composed by Mark Liburkin, Staroverov and Alexander Kazantsev. Alexander Kazantsev was not only a brilliant chess composer, but also a famous science fiction writer and a ufologist. So it turns out that actually three composers worked on this endgame study. And this was first published in 1933 in a Soviet chess magazine, Chess in the USSR. It's white to move and win the game. You can post a video and try to find the solution. Pay attention please, right now in my analysis I am using Houdini 5. The interesting thing is that I have tested with this endgame study both Komodo and Stockfish and all failed as well as Houdini. Right now you can see that Houdini is offering that the best move is b6, well that's true, let's just have a look at the position, well if you capture on h2, white can simply promote to a queen and white will win, so black has a very strong idea to bring the bishop to h3 square and only then capture on h2, In because in that case black can easily make a fortress, let's see how it goes, b6, and now the engine offers a move like bishop f7, but I will play bishop e8. And now the engine offers a move like b7, which is actually leads to a draw. Let's see that variation as well. If you play b7, then simply bishop b5. And if you promote your pawn to a queen, now just black is realizing this idea by bringing the bishop to f1 square and then to h3, forming a fortress and then capturing the bishop on h2. Bishop f1, well, king e4, and now I can simply capture on h2. If king f4, now simply bishop h3, and this is a dead draw position, there is no way to win with the white pieces. I will simply move my king and this is a draw. So in this position, instead of playing b7, as you can see the engine offers, also this is the second choice, king c5. King c5, yes, it's a very strong move. Now comes bishop g6, again eyeing on bringing the bishop to this f1, a6 diagonal. King d4, and now again I'm playing bishop e8. And this time, yes, b7 is strong, because already by playing king d4, this is very important, the king is near to f2 square, b7, and now bishop b5. And in this position, again, the engine is making a terrible mistake by promoting his pawn to a queen, or king e5, which all lead to a draw. Look at this, if king e5 then simply bishop f1, and uh, I have already showed this variation. Let's go back, instead of king e5, let's have a look at this b8 queen variation. Simply bishop f1, and if you play a move like queen b1, then black is capturing on h2, queen takes f1, and this is a stalemate and a draw. Let's go back, so in this position, you have already noticed that the engine is just unable to find the solution. The best move is an absolutely fantastic b8 rook. What a move. And now if you play a move like bishop f1, then simply rook b1. And if you capture, of course, this is not a stalemate and white is winning. So after rook b1, black plays this king g2 move, king e3, protecting the pawn on f2, and now bishop c4. Understanding that there is no way to protect the pawn on g4 from h3 square, black is going to protect his pawn from this diagonal, h3 c8 diagonal. And now white rook is starting to chase black bishop. Bishop e6, rook b6, bishop d7, 
rook h6 protecting the bishop on h2, bishop c8, rook h4, bishop d7, king f4, king takes f2, and now rook takes g4, bishop takes g4, king takes g4, king g2, and a very strong move by white, which is actually a winning move. Can you find that move? Here comes this bishop g1 move, not allowing to promote to a queen. Well, if you capture on g1, simply king takes f3, and this is winning for white. What a brilliant endgame study. Your comments and questions, please. And thanks for watching. Good luck.